Yeah. Enjoy being unstoppable. Here's a lesson that I pulled from my program on how to fight larger people, which will teach you a diabolical footlock called a toe hold, which is way more vicious than it sounds. Holding toes normally, not so vicious. <laughs> Today I'm gonna teach you about toe holds, which is a joint lock you can throw on people of all sizes immediately off of a single leg takedown. Now a toe hold is designed to blow out this entire cluster of ligaments in your opponent's foot, specifically the calcaneofibular ligament and the talofibular ligament if you care. Basically, I'm gonna grab Greg's foot and I'm gonna be cranking down with my hands, causing all this to blow out. To be perfectly honest, after looking at this picture, I don't know what the hell's blowing out. All right, so I'm gonna give you the basic details first and then I'll give you all the advanced stuff that makes this entire setup and the move work flawlessly. Now, first you have to grab your opponent's foot correctly. In this case, you wanna cover your opponent's toes and it's my right hand on his left foot. Now, right and left and thinking of that in the middle of a fight gets a little dicey sometimes. So the thing that helped me is by covering my opponent's toes, reaching to the outside of his foot and matching my pointer finger with his pinky toe. Do you have nail polish on? Uh, that was actually from a detail, yeah. It's not nail polish, I came off the street. I didn't have shoes on. <laughs> toe holds. <laughs> Back to what I was saying before Greg was wearing toenail polish. You have to develop a method to grab these things consistently and always end up with the right hold. The thing that made it make sense for me was to cover the guy's toes reaching across his foot, but to match my pointer finger on his pinky toe. You can see if I was covering his toes on this hand, it'd be my pointer finger on his big toe. Pointer finger to pinky toe, it just works in my mind. If you can come up with a little trick like that that makes it make sense to you, do it. You're only gonna have to do it at the start and then you'll just be grabbing these things from all over the place. Now the next element of the move is just weaving your other arm over your opponent's calf and figure four clasping your own wrist. You don't need to grab with a thumb for this. It's actually better thumbless. Now you can see the application of pushing my palms down towards the mat is what's gonna start cranking his foot this way and pop the joint. Now, let's set this thing up. Now, anytime your opponent lands with his leg outside your body on a single leg, you can immediately go into the toe hold. A couple ways you can get there. One, I got a single leg, his leg is outside. I can actually step behind his heel, boom, and I have that finish right there. Conversely, we have our heel sweep, which we've done a hundred times. Boom. That's also gonna drop the guy down with his leg outside. Now, when the guy lands, I want you to move in immediately like you're doing your cross knee pass where you drop a couple of strikes on the guy, you push this leg down, get past this, kind of drag the arm. Okay, it's the same procedure to start. But that's not what we're gonna do at all. Now, instead of actually passing over this leg, we're just gonna snatch this foot that's waiting right here for us. Introducing the backside toe hold. Oh yeah. Now you need to be fast and practically mechanical if you want to make this thing unstoppable. So pay attention. As this guy is thinking about the punches and whatnot that I'm dropping on him, I'm going to reach back, boom, and snag this toe hold position as I smack this knee. Now both of these things work to keep the guy's legs secure and in place for one second. This pushing this way and obviously me getting a hold of the toe. Now this is something you need to make mechanical. It helps if you don't have to even look at it. That way you can concentrate up here and then just snatch this toe hold. Now the next movement remains the same. I'm gonna weave over and I grab this figure four lock. But now to finish this thing, I'm gonna rip my elbow back like this. And I'm gonna pull him over onto his stomach. So I have this locked and I go, boom, bam. All right, now I step my right leg in with me. So I bring my whole base in. Let's roll you back. So we're here. And now all I have to do to apply this lock is just go boom. I have essentially snapped all those ligaments in his foot. Now for all intents and purposes, you can throw the move at this point, but there's a number of little details and advanced nuggets of information that you can add to make this thing just a little bit more unstoppable and quite a bit more unescapable. Inescapable? Inescapable or unescapable? I don't even think you can be a little bit more unescapable or inescapable. It's pretty much all or nothing. So make this one the unescapable or inescapable. Now let's unlock the advanced details and really iron this thing out. So I got Greg on the ground here. 
The first thing that's really important is making sure you actually bundle the guy up a little bit when you're in this position. I really want to be driving this shin into him and bending this knee as I come in. Almost all ankle locks are made easier by having a nice bent knee to apply it on. Now Greg just asked me, am I worried about sweeps when I'm pushing him in this position? Not as long as I have one leg distinctly forward driving in. If I have both feet forward, Greg can lock this, push over and come up for a sweep. Not bad, Greg. Not too clean. But at the end of the day, as long as I only have one leg driving in here, I'm okay. Boom! Go for my move. The point where this guy might get out of the move is when I reach back to actually weave this arm over the top. If the guy's legs are completely straight out here and I go reach back, he's just going to pull his legs all the way into his chest and he's going to get out. He has much more pulling that he can do out here. But now if I've already driven my, you know, his knees up into his chest, he has less room to pull and it's harder for him. Moving on. Now this right here is one of the coolest details about the move. Watch what happens when I really push down when I grab this foot. <sighs> Greg immediately pops his hips up because he wants to alleviate some of the pressure of me pushing down on this series of ligaments. The higher he gets his hips up, the less of an angle I have here, so the less it applies the move. Now when he's popping his hips up like this, when I'm holding this toe down, he's not yanking his foot back. The last thing he probably wants to do is yank his foot back because that crap hurts right now. So that fundamentally secures the position and with his hips up like that, I have an easier move to roll. Okay, having it popped up like that just makes it easier to turn over. So again, the move works better and he's not going anywhere. Greg has really no options from here other than toenail polishes. Uh, that was actually from Whatever you say, Greg. If you've ever let a girl paint your nails in an ass backwards attempt to get laid, then it's mandatory that you like this video and leave a comment in shame. Now, I think I mentioned this before, but it's probably worth doing about a thousand reps of just this right here. <laughs> where you <coughs> grab the toe hold, <coughs> trying to get right on the edge of the guy's toes, pushing down, and again, you're securing this knee just for a split second. Now, the final element of this move where you actually turn the guy over, it's just really important to pivot uh, on that one posting standing foot. So if I'm doing this on the right side of my body, my right foot is gonna hinge around, and I'm gonna pivot on this left foot. So I take this in, I go, whoa. All right, now I'm close to him. If I didn't move that in, I could still be all the way out here. Greg can straighten his leg. He can do a number of things that make it tough for me to finish this. But I bring this in, I crunch my abs down. Now there's absolutely nowhere that he is going. I'm definitely finishing this thing every single time. So that's the Trav toe hold setup, I guess. So what now? Now, if you're watching this on my website at howtofightnow.com, you might want to check out the other free videos in the how to fight bigger people section. And if you like takedowns that move directly into ankle locks like this one, you might want to check out the instant fight ender section. And did I mention it's all free? Well, it's free. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you get nothing. At least until I resurface again in another five or six months. So you might as well go to howtofightnow.com, sign up, you'll get a free stash of lessons, and I'll email you a whole bunch more stuff when I make new videos. Which is pretty consistently. Don't lie to him, Trav. You lazy as shit. So if you haven't already done so, like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment. Say something clever. And otherwise, have a good day. Hiya! Thanks for watching.